Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, today we will have a session about the clinical aspects of using new methods in thermal therapy. Uh, before we will start the session, it's just the information to close all the applications associated with the internet, except the webinar session. So you can do it now, and then we can start this uh, session with good connection of the internet and our studio here in Technomax. Okay. So we can start. Uh, this is the clinical uh, session about the aspects of using new methods in thermal therapy, which is based on the thermal therapy by Cosmo Gamma RND uh, department. Uh, the elements uh, which I will follow during my presentation will be what is the thermal energy therapy, so what is the definition of the thermal therapy, then what are the important aspects of using heat and cold uh, during the physical uh, therapy rehabilitation, and then what are the applications by using separately heat, by using separately cold, and by alternating heat and cold in uh, some injuries. And then we will call about the immediate care. Why using cold during the immediate care is such an important element. Then we will follow some elements about the temperature changes produced by cryotherapy, and uh, following some researches about the thermovision evaluation during the cross-stimulation by carbon dioxide and the cooling liquid uh, glycol. And then we will give you some examples of using heat and cold uh, in physical therapy. And at the end, we will make the practical uh, session. OK, so first of all, th this is the definition. So what is the thermal energy therapy? What is the thermal uh, energy? This is the uh, term which is associated with two elements, with the environment and with the body tissue. So this is the exchange of the energy, called the thermal energy, between the environment and between the body tissue. So as a result, we have two techniques. These, these are the techniques based on the heat application and techniques based on the heat uh, removal. And we have to look for some uh, therapeutic effects and some important elements by applying uh, the techniques based on the heat application. So we're using heat in the physical uh, therapy. So this is uh, by exposing the body into the temperature upper than the body temperature. All the substances that possess the temperature upper than the absolute zero, so minus 273 degrees, possess heat. So by talking about the application of using heat, we think about the superficial tissues, so application for the skin, the under skin, and the subcutaneous tissues, but also for deeper tissues, so muscles, articulations, joint capsules, ligaments, tendons, bursitis. And here we think about the superficial thermal therapy and about the uh, deeper uh, thermal therapy. OK, so first we can look for the superficial uh, therapy. So this is the transform uh, of heat directly into the tissues to the depth of about one centimeter. It's obvious that uh, by applying this way, the heat is going also below. But the, the therapeutic effects are on the low, uh, level of the one centimeter, so the skin and the under skin. So by applying uh, the heat for the superficial tissues, so the skin, under skin, subcutaneous tissues, we think about the direct action of using heat. For deeper structures, like muscles, tendons, ligaments, this is the indirect action by conduction, convection, radiation, and conversion. So conduction, this is a transfer of heat occurring between two bodies on unequal temperature when they come into the contact with each other. Conduction, this is a transfer of heat occurring between the body and the moving fluid or gaze also at unequal temperatures. Then we have the radiation. Uh, so this is a transfer of uh, uh, energy in the form of waves, rays, particles, and the uh, violets. OK. Um, so uh, the thermal energy uh, induced in tissues is prolonged for the uh, superficial tissues, but it's moderated for the deeper tissues. So it's really important to know the aspect how the heat is transferred into the superficial tissues and then into the deeper tissues. Okay. So when we look for the important aspects of using heat, we think about the metabolic action, vascular action, also the action of muscles, connective tissue, nerves, pseudophilus glands, action on heart and lungs. If you look particularly for this action, the action of, uh, of um, metabolism is associated with the increase of the metabolism, so the increase of some biomechanical reaction of the cells of the living tissues which sustain life. So by uh, applying the heat, we can increase the metabolism. So we allow better growth, better maintains, better reproduce, and better respond to the environment by the tissue structures. 
Uh, then we think about the vascular action. This is associated with the vasodilatation. This is the defense response uh, to promote the energy uh, dissipation. So by vaso, uh, vascular action, we have the vasodilatation. It causes the increase of the blood flow, and we have better delivery. Uh, we have better supply of the oxygen, nutrition, white blood cells, and the removal of catabolites and the uh, waste products. Okay. Then we have also the action of uh, connective tissue, which changes uh, the structures, the properties of the fibrous tissues. Uh, so it increases the distensibility of the ligaments, of, of the tendons, joints, scar tissues. Uh, okay, so uh, by applying the uh, action uh, for the connective tissue, we have also a better stretch uh, for the tissues uh, during kitten. Then there is action on uh, nerves, causing the uh, decrease increase of the threshold uh, and the action on the pseudophilous glands uh, to make uh, secrete them uh, sweat. This is the cutaneous response to promote the energy dissipation and the action on heart and lungs, which are associated with the changes in the cardiocircular and the ventilatory system. So this is the vasoconstriction in the spinal region and the increase of the cardiac output. Uh, this is the compensation of the widespread vasodilatation in the peripheral aspects. And then we have also the increase of the ventilation, which is called the hyperventilation. So these are the important aspects uh, by using the techniques uh, based on the heat application. But uh, to talk about the therapeutic effects of using heat, we must follow three really important elements. So uh, the thermal stimulation must increase the local temperature of 45 degrees. It must be delivered for several minutes, so must be delivered for a time sufficiently long. And what is really important must produce a quick temperature variation. This is important because a slow variation could facilitate some receptor adaptation. And by following these uh, three elements, these three points, we can think about this therapeutic effect. Just mention one more time the relaxation of the contracted muscles uh, as the direct action on the spindle uh, receptor discharge, very important for the patient with hypertonus and with the muscle contractions. The tropic effects causing the vasodilatation, so better delivery of the oxygen, nutrition, white blood cells, and uh, removal of the catabolites and the waste, uh, waste products. And also the analgesic effects causing the increase of the threshold. Okay. On the other hand, we have also the techniques based on the heat removal. So we think about the cryotherapy and about the cryostimulation. There are different distinguishes of cryotherapy. Uh, here, according to the temperature, we can divide the cryotherapy for two elements. So this is the extreme cryotherapy. And we use the temperatures from minus 180 degrees of Celsius to zero degrees of Celsius. And also the mild cryotherapy using the uh, temperatures from minus 18 up to 10 degrees of Celsius. So cryotherapy is the exposing of body into the temperatures lower than the body temperature. And here, we can also think about the effects of using cold. So the main effects of the cold application. So this is the hemodynamic, metabolic, an analgesic, and myorelaxing effect, which are accompanied with the anti-inflammatory, anti-edematogenic, analgesic, and myorelaxing action. So we can also look particularly for this uh, element. So hemodynamic effect causing the vasoconstriction. It causes the reduction of the local uh, blood supply. And this is really important for the patient with edema, especially with the uh, post-traumatic and the post-operative edema. So hemodynamic effects associated with the anti-edematogenic action. Then we have the metabolic uh, effects. By using heat, there was the increase of the metabolism. Here we have the decrease of the metabolism, which is really important for uninjured tissues around the tissue damage, because they can remain intact in the term following the tissue de damage. Moreover, the decrease of the metabolism also makes the inhibition of uh, reduce uh, of the inflammatory mediator, so metabolic e effects associated with the anti-inflammatory action and also the analgesic action, causing the decrease of the speed conduction of uh, pain stimulus at the level of the peripheral nerves, and the myorelaxing uh, effects causing the decrease of the uh, tonus and the spasm of the muscles. So as I mentioned, analgesic and myorelaxing effects 
that's associated with the analgesic and the myorelaxing action. Uh, okay, so we know the main uh, therapeutic effects by uh, using the techniques uh, based on the heat application and the heat removal. So here are just the examples of using heat separately and cold separately, and then I will give you also the examples of using the alternating of heat and cold in the uh, physical therapy. So just the examples of uh, the application of heat, which could be the generative articular diseases, sequel of joint injuries and the muscle contractures. For the application of cold, we mainly think, uh, but not only, about the acute stages of uh, rehabilitation after the acute injuries. So these are the examples of the acute post-traumatic inflammations. It's an example like lacerations and confusion of soft tissues, strains and strains of muscle tendons, ligaments, also fractures, myalgia and muscle spasm. As I mentioned, cryotherapy is really important during the acute stage of the rehabilitation, but we also think about the chronic processes. As, as an example, the arthritis, degenerative joint diseases like atrosis and endonitis. Okay. And here we have the uh, using heat and cold at the same time. So imagine we have a patient with some subacute and chronic phases of some traumatic or inflammatory conditions. It causes the venous circulation being compromised. So we use heat which causes the vasodilatation and cold, which causes the vasoconstriction. And by using the alternation of uh, heat and cold, we have the main effect, so the increase of blood flow in the treatment area. So we have this application separated for cold, separated for heat, and by alternating heat and cold causing the vasodilatation and vasoconstriction, using them in one cycle, which causes the increase of the blood flow in the treatment area. Okay? But, as I mentioned, using cold is really important during the uh, acute uh, injuries. So we can divide the injuries into two types. These are the acute injuries with high intensity and short duration force. Some examples, strains, strains and confusion. But also some chronic injuries. They are with low intensity force or long duration. And there are also the recurring acute injuries. Uh, we will follow the uh, price method, which is used during the acute stage of rehabilitation. So we will mainly think about these acute injuries. So the injuries with high intensity and short duration force. These elements of this injury are really, really important. Okay. So when we think about the classification of the acute and chronic injuries, uh, we have the three stages of uh, the curve of acute and the recurrent acute injuries. So this is the acute, subacute, and the postacute. Stages. So, the acute uh, stage is from zero day to the fourth day. It is really important because uh, using price method uh, gives us uh, the most effective therapeutic elements when we use it immediately after the injury. And if we take it into the time frames, so the immediate, transition, subacute, and the postacute curve. So, when we will talk about the immediate curve, we think about the first stage, so the acute stage. But in time phase, it will be the immediate and the transition curve. So these are these two elements. Okay, uh, so as I mentioned, the using cryotherapy gives us the most uh, effective elements during the first eight treatments. But we, uh, so using them during the acute stages of the rehabilitation. But also, it gives us uh, different benefits. So we can use it also in other parts of the physical therapy applications, so also in chronic processes. But we will pay attention mainly to the uh, acute stage of the rehabilitation. So we can use cryotherapy in the dermatology, rehabilitation, traumatology, orthopedics, surgery. So the, the field of using cryotherapy is really wide. But here we think about the immediate curve. So some anatomical changes of the uh, acute injuries. So high, in high intensity and short duration force. These are the anatomical, physiological, and the pathological changes. So we think about the changes not only of the skin, not only of the superficial tissues uh, under skin, but also the changes of deeper structures. There will be different application of cryotherapy for deeper tissues and for superficial tissues. So it will be also the changes of the, as I said before, of the muscles, of the tendons, ligaments, joint capsules, articula articulations, and the bursitis. 
So we think about, about the price model. So this is the prevention, rest, ice, compression, elevation. We have also pure uh, mobilization, medication, and also destabilization. So as you can see, we use this price method during the immediate curve, and two elements of thermotherapy are used uh, during price method. This is the ice, and this is the compression. But as I mentioned, to talk about the effective uh, elements by using price method, we have to use it immediately after the term. We shouldn't wait for uh, uh, hours and days. Okay. So, as I mentioned, the applying the uh, price method gives us a quicker killing. So we minimize after effects of the injury. Such an injury is like swelling, muscle spasm, pain, and the neural inhibition. But uh, by using this, as I mentioned before, in the price method, we use rest. They will use rest, uh, compression, ice, elevation, and so on. So by using cold, we reduce the blood flow. So uh, by using cold, we can achieve the vasoconstriction. By using compression, we decrease uh, the blood flow. And as a result, we have the reduction of the hemorrhaging and also the reduction of swelling. So using this element is really important during uh, the immediate care of the physical uh, rehabilitation. But just the conclusion, uh, before we will go to the applications of cryotherapy for the superficial and for the deeper tissues, we have this uh, acute uh, care of um, we have the care of the acute injuries. So we were talking about the first stage, so the acute stage from zero days, so immediately after the injury, up to the fourth day. And here were also the uh, elements of the uh, acute stages, uh, the slide before. Okay, so when we think about the uh, applying the cryotherapy for the uh, skin, so for the superficial tissues, skin, under skin, and all the uh, cutaneous tissues, we have to think about three really important elements. By applying the cryotherapy for the superficial tissues, we have a sharp degrees decrease of the temperature in the surface area. Uh, when we held uh, this uh, cold, so the uh, modality constantly, there is a more intense and long-lasting cooling effect. And when we combine uh, cryotherapy with the compressor therapy, we have a greater decreased temperature. So these three elements are really, really important when we apply cryotherapy uh, for the superficial tissues. Okay? So this element. There is a sharp degree of the temperature. When we have a constant application, uh, we have more intense and long-lasting cooling effect. And when we combine, when we put together cryotherapy with the compression, we'll have a greater temperature decrease. Now we can look uh, how are the changes for the deeper tissues. So as I mentioned, muscles, articulations, joint capsule, tendons, ligaments. You can see that uh, the temperature decreases uh, more gradually when we apply a cryotherapy for the deeper tissues. It depends on the depth, but also depends on the type of the tissue. So deeper tissue temperature continues to decrease for some time. So we have to think about the kind of modality, the kind of application of modality that we use uh, for cooling superficial structures but also for cooling deeper structure. I will show on an exam what is the difference by uh, applying different modalities. So by cold application, just the observation, the temperature decreases more gradually and also tend to react by increasing more slowly. Okay? So by knowing this, uh, these elements for the superficial tissues, that there is a sharp decrease of the temperature, when you have a constant maintains, there is a uh, uh, more intense and low lasting cooling effects. And if you put together cryotherapy and with the compressor therapy, we have a greater uh, decrease of the temperature. And for deeper structures, uh, they, uh, the temperature decrease more gradually. Here you can see uh, uh, three applications of uh, thermal energy. So there is a cold gaze with ice and the thermopress using the cooling liquid glycol. You can see that in all of three uh, elements of all three of these applications of modalities, there is a sharp de decrease, but then there is an increase of the cold gaze and also the ice. So this is the question, what kind of uh, thermal energy can you use for uh, cooling not only superficial tissues, 
but mainly the deeper tissues. By using clinical uh, internal tests, there is a constant maintain uh, of the lower temperature. Uh, okay, so when we go to these injuries, so not only the changes of the superficial tissues, but also and mainly the changes of the deeper tissues. And uh, there is such a um, research that we made, uh, that was made uh, in Poland, uh, the thermovision evaluation which compared the first stimulation by using carbon dioxide and glycol, and just comparing which one is for the superficial and for the deeper uh, cryotherapy. Okay? So, uh, the aim of this study was to, uh, to compare the, the, the dynamic uh, temperature changes of the tissues after the cross stimulation by using carbon dioxide and by using glycol in the thermopress. Therefore, for healthy persons without the contraindications for cross stimulation procedures, and we apply the cryotherapy for the ankle and the knee joints, as I mentioned, by using carbon dioxide and by using thermopress with some flexible channels, channels with cooling liquid uh, glycol. Okay, so in the table you can see that by using carbon dioxide, the temperature was minus 75 degrees of Celsius in the outlet of nozzle. The application was just for three minutes without any compressor therapy. Uh, comparing with using a liquid based on glycol, there was higher temperature from, let's say, zero to three, four degrees. The time was longer, it was nine minutes, and also we applied the compressor therapy. Okay, so on this picture, you can see the thermovision evaluation by uh, applying the cross stimulation of using carbon dioxide. It's just before, during, immediately after the cross stimulation, and then after three minutes, after uh, six minutes, and after nine minutes. Just look for the changes of the temperature during this uh, thermovision evaluation, and try to compare the uh, changes after nine minutes. With the second slide showing the thermovision of glycol. Okay. So this is the uh, thermovision evaluation by using the cross stimulation of uh, cooling liquid glycol. Uh, so also before, during, after, immediately after, and then uh, three minutes, six and uh, nine minutes after the application. Okay. So. Uh, we have uh, results from this uh, research. So, lowering of the body temperature with using thermopress uh, with compressor therapy enables to reach deeper located tissues. So, we don't only use it for the uh, superficial tissues, but uh, for deeper tissues, just to uh, obligation uh, acute injuries, the changes in deeper tissues. So the muscles, articulations, not only the changes of the superficial tissues. And the lowering of skin temperature is more longitudinal and affects greater area when we use the thermopress comparing to using the carbon dioxide. So it is for not only superficial but also or mainly for deeper tissues. So it's really important during the acute injury, acute, acute injury therapy. So with high intensity, a short duration force. Uh, so for deeper structures which are associated with the acute injuries, okay? And here, uh, by using thermopress, we have the cooling effects, we have the compressor therapy, but we have also the isolation of the treatment area from the external temperature, and these three elements favors the cooling of deeper structures. But you shouldn't also forget about the using the carbon dioxide. Um, here, it was short-lasting and involving only small area indication. So it was really good for the superficial tissues. So this knowledge, how to apply the uh, heat, how to apply, apply cold during the physical therapy uh, is really important because the aim of our treatment is always to help the patient. Okay, so uh, here are just the examples of some indications of uh, thermotherapy. Uh, immediately after the injury. Uh, so the, the, it could be the application of 10 up to 20 minutes every two hours the first day for deeper uh, tissues we, inc uh, we increase the uh, time, so up to 30 minutes every two hours with sessions of 15 minutes per hour. The temperature is around 5 to 6, minutes, uh, five to six degrees of Celsius and also combined with the elevation. And the cold is applied intermittently. Okay? Here is another example, considering the intermittent application of 
30 to 40 minutes into hours, a session of 10 minutes, and the post of 15 to 20 minutes between the application. What is really important, if we uh, apply the uh, body into the temperature uh, close to zero or uh, below zero for a long time, uh, time, so when there is a long and constant application uh, around the zero or below zero degrees of Celsius, it could be potentially dangerous for a patient. So for uh, cooling deeper structures, we don't have to uh, use lower temperatures, uh, lower temperatures than, than zero degrees of Celsius, but we can enlarge the time. There is such a rule, the, lower, uh, the longer the time of application, the lower the temperature within the tissues. So this is really important to remember. And also another example, uh, example according to the depth of the tissue, we may assume the following temperatures uh, for calf. So this is action of 10 minutes, or 15 to 18 minutes at the temperature of 8 degrees for 2 hours and for fingers. So this is the action of 5 minutes, or 10 minutes at the 10 degrees of Celsius for 2 hours. These are just the examples. And the last one for the acute uh, injuries. So we can use code for 4 to 6 uh, degrees of Celsius. Time uh, here is for, from 8 to 12 minutes, intervals of 10 to 15 minutes. And for deeper tissues, uh, there are longer sessions. To prevent the uh, hematoma formation, it will be for 3 to 5 uh, hours. And we also use these elements of the price method. So rest, elevation, and the compressor therapy. therapy. And there is a several uh, times repetition in the first days after the injury. Okay? So as I mentioned, mainly we use uh, cryotherapy during the acute stages of rehabilitation, but we can also apply it for the subsequent uh, phases. So uh, as an example, before and, ap and after active or passive exercises, which are associated or which uh, may cause the uh, reactive micro injuries. So by using um, cryotherapy during the acute or subsequent phases, we have this uh, therapeutic element, so the increase of the pain threshold and we prevent the edema and hematoma formation. Okay? And just one example for using uh, heat. So uh, the temperature is from 39 to 42 degrees of Celsius, action of 6 to 10 minutes, pause 10 minutes, also comparing with the uh, compressor therapy. We can use it for the uh, sport injuries. So uh, the simultaneous myorelaxing and sedative action effectively interrupts the uh, cycle, which is called the pain, spasm pain cycle, which is common in the sport injuries. And we can also use it for the uh, preparation for kinesi therapy. So there is the increase of the tendon extensibility, reduction of the joint rigidity, and also the minor relaxing and the analgo sedative effects. And this facilitates the prepar preparation for kinesi therapy. These are just examples uh, of using, and our obligation by using here we have the increase of the viscosity, decrease of the metabolism, as I mentioned, the changes in the nerve stimulation, and as a result we have also the pain relief. Okay? Uh, now we will have the uh, practical session uh, of using uh, different uh, modalities. So as I mentioned, it's really important to know uh, if we apply the therapy for uh, superficial and for deeper tissue, the tissues, the same by using the heat therapy. So uh, we will do our uh, session on the device called the Thermobus. So this is the device with the flexible uh, channels. They are uh, filled with the uh, cooling liquid called uh, glico. It gives us a constant maintenance of the uh, temperature. And we also use the uh, cups. So we have the uh, shoulder cup on the shoulder joint, then the lumbar uh, cup, also the cup for the uh, knee articulation and for the ankle uh, articulation, and one for the elbow articulation. OK, so uh, now we will uh, run the film. So we you will not see me, but you can hear me showing you uh, the applications of thermotherapy. Uh, application and the techniques based on the heat uh, uh, removal. So 
three really important elements uh, during this uh, el uh, during the rehabilitation. So the cold therapy. The heat therapy uh, using the temperatures from 0 to 40 uh, degrees, also the compression uh, therapy, and we have, as I mentioned, the application for the uh, area, so there is an isolation of the treatment area from the uh, external uh, temperature. Uh, here you can see the programs uh, which can be followed during. the application of uh, a thermopress. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, using it separately for, uh, for uh, cold therapy and also for the uh, heat therapy and by alternating heat and cold therapy uh, with the compressor uh, therapy. Uh, this is really important. Then we will, uh, you, you, can, you can see it during the practical session on our uh, model. Here you can also see uh, the program, so uh, you can uh, change the langu uh, languages uh, in the program during the uh, stages of the uh, rehabilitation. Okay, uh, so um, uh, here you can use different uh, languages according to the country that you are uh, from. Uh, after this uh, application of uh, setup, you can also use the database of the patient, so we can put the new patient file according to the name, surname, pathology, and the initial uh, pain. And then you can go into uh, the programs. So these are uh, here are the uh, ready programs uh, associated with the uh, using cold and heat uh, for the acute uh, injuries and the chronic injuries with the uh, with the same example that I gave you uh, before. But we can also uh, create our uh, program. Uh, so by creating this program, uh, we put uh, these three modes. So this is the Okay, we are back after some problems. Uh, okay, so uh, that was the end of the film, and now we'll have the practical session. So uh, we have our model here, and there will be a session of the local application of the thermal factor, it will be cold, and also of the mechanical factor, it will be the intermediate press massage, and this will be applied for the uh, in the, in the joint, okay? So, we have the cut for the knee joint, okay? So, we put the cut. It's still with glycol, as I mentioned. Constant application for superficial and deeper tissues. Now we will put the flexible channels, so we will close the cross circulation uh, system. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, we will do the cold therapy. So the free program, uh, it will be cold mode. Uh, the temperature will be about 4 degrees of Celsius. Action time will be five minutes, and the pause time uh, will be one minute. 
And we'll also use the compressor in therapy. The action will be 10 seconds. And the pause will be 5 seconds. Okay, so 10 seconds. And here will be 5 seconds. And now we apply this uh, code, okay? Better to use it. So uh, she has this uh, application. I will also give you some examples of the treatment that was done uh, here in Poland, also by using cryotherapy and using the compressor therapy at the same time. So these are just four cases. All the cases, there was a treatment of the cryotherapy with pressing massage using the thermopress device. The treatment was performed every day. The device was set on three cycles. Single treatment duration was approximately 15 minutes. It's really important when we will follow these cases to look for the examination and then the changes after uh, treatment. So, first of all, we have the female. She was 15, engaged in active sport, reported on treatment three days after the knee injury. On the examination, there was a pain, edema, balloting patella, limping while walking, increase in the knee circumference by 2 cm, compared with the opposite side, limitation of flexion in the knee joint, and the intensity of pain in vast scale was 8,5. Okay? So after four uh, treatments, there was the uh, decrease, the reduction uh, of the pain in the vast scale, going from 8.5 to 5. Uh, before there was the edema, here the, there was the edema uh, disappearing, and the range of motion for flexion in the knee joint recovered to the normal volume. So before there was the limitation of flexion in the knee joint. Okay? Uh, now we'll have the um, Another uh, case, so also the female uh, 15, engaged in active sport, but with treatment uh, with the ankle injury, so uh, two weeks after the ankle injury, before she was treated by orthopedic surgery. On the examination, there was also the edema of ankle, the limitation of dorsiflexion, pronation, and the supination. There was also a pain when walking long uh, distances. So after six treatments, the edema was reduced, uh, there was a completely relieved from pain, and the range of motion uh, was uh, much improved. Okay? Uh, the next case also will be uh, the female, she was 30, uh, after the injury of uh, tibia two weeks before the treatment. Uh, she had a, before uh, the crow therapy, she had the treatment of analgesic and anti-inflammatory gels in the examination. Uh, there was a really uh, painful edema, warming of the lower uh, limb, increased circumference of calf by 2 cm compared with the healthy side. And after two sessions, the pain was reduced, and after five sessions, it completely uh, relieved. There was no edema, and the calf circumference returned to the normal before it was uh, the increase uh, of the circumference by 2 cm compared with the healthy side. And the last one, the female, she was 57. She had some, she was after the uh, arthropic surgery of the right knee, two weeks before the therapy. Uh, she was treated before with other form of uh, physiotherapy. On the examination, there was a pain in the vascular in the level of eight. There was edema, limited mobility of the knee, and increased circumference of the joint by three centimeters in comparison with the healthy limb. And after 10 treatment, uh, the mobility of the knee was improved, the circumference of the joint significantly was reduced, and the pain was going from 8 up to uh, 3 in the bus scale. So these are just the examples of using the same method by applying the cryostimulation and the compressor therapy for the knee joint uh, problems. Okay, so just for the uh, conclusions. It's really important not only to know the main effects of using uh, techniques based on the heat application or based on the heat removal. It's really important to know uh, how the uh, energy is transformed, uh, transformed, transferred into the tissues, 
how it's applied for the superficial tissues and for the deeper tissues. Because if uh, we have a device where we can control the volume of temperature and the volume of time, we can apply specific uh, cryotherapy or using heat uh, for special area. Uh, another thing, this is really important to have the constant maintained. So uh, it's really important to use appropriate uh, modality for the uh, heat therapy and the uh, cold therapy according to the elements, the uh, ethics that you want to uh, achieve. Uh, this is one of such a uh, element. So we use, as I mentioned, glycol. We have this constant uh, application. It's really important because, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning, our main aim by using all the devices in thermal therapy, by using price method, by using the in acute stages, in chronic stages, it's just to help the patient to relieve the pain uh, and to uh, make some active uh, and uh, passive and active uh, activities. Okay, uh, thank you really, uh, very much for this session. Uh, we will uh, finish it, but if you will have some questions after, uh, yeah, you can also uh, send us uh, an email to our office. Uh, so we will wait for your uh, opinions about this. Uh, if you have any opinions, just send us and we'll all uh, right. So thank you very much. Right? Uh, uh, you can also yeah, download, yeah? You can also download this uh, presentation uh, for 15 minutes after this uh, session. So thank you very much.